Hey folks, I want to talk to you about this application radio. I strongly recommend radio to help grandparents and parents read to their grandchildren remotely when they can't be in the same room. Whether you're living across the country, across the world, or you're just gone on a business trip, radio makes it easy for you to read to those young ones when you're away. It's a super easy tool that allows for video monitoring across the top of the screen so they can see you and you can see them, as well as having the book prominently displayed, making it easy for you to read to those young ones, or better yet, having them read to you. What I want you guys to do is go to cool-grandpa.us, look for the affiliate link for Radio, click on that link, and sign up today for your free trial. Hello and welcome to the Cool Grandpa Podcast. This is your host Greg Payne coming at you from Studio 12. This podcast is about being the best possible grandpa you can be. Focusing on what it is to be a grandpa and how we can all share that experience together for our grandchildren. Hi, I'm so glad that you are here with me today. I enjoy these one-on-one chats with you. The thing I want to talk about this time is the importance of traditions and even rituals, right? And you might be thinking traditions and rituals are the same thing. And there's a lot of bleed over between the two. But I want to break up traditions from rituals. And, you know, a good way to think about traditions and rituals is traditions are the the activity at a high level. Let's say a 4th of July picnic is a tradition, you know, and then the ritual part of the 4th of July picnic is going to be having uh, apple pie. It's going to be having macaroni salad. It's going to be having hot dogs and hamburgers on the grill. Those elements or rituals, if it's the same menu over and over again, is That's part of the tradition, but the tradition itself is the 4th of July picnic with the ritual being hamburgers, hot dogs, apple pie, macaroni salad, and then whatever other activities go on with the family at that point. So I want to talk a little bit about the benefits of family traditions, you know, and the first one that comes to mind is this is where the memories come out for the family. Now, as little kids that might enjoy the tradition of a family reunion or a family outing, those are the things that when they're 40, 50, 60 years old, that they're going to look back on and say, oh, my mom and dad always used to take us here. Oh, my uncles always used to do this with us. Oh, my grandfather and grandmother always used to do X with us. And That creates that memory and it creates a bond even between generations. So if you think about it, one of the things that you might enjoy doing as a tradition with your family and your grandchildren may have actually been a tradition in an activity that you did with your grandparents or your aunts and uncles or your mom and dad. So what you're doing is you're essentially passing over this family memory and these family traditions back to your grandchildren and your children. And so that connection is something that you can look back on and you can tell your grandchildren how your grandfather used to do X with you at the 4th of July picnic. The other part too is that it provides children with a sense of continuity and a sense of security. You know, we I think sometimes we really discount and are in a place in our society today where we look at traditions and everything's under question and everything is being thrown out and wanting something new in. And maybe this is something that our grandparents talked about and their grandparents talked about. And this may be old guy coming through, but it seems like traditions and rituals, whether they're secular or 
they're religious or they're just family traditions or community traditions are really kind of under fire and under stress today. But the thing is, is that children enjoy having that sense of security and that sense of providing continuity with the past, right? And if we think about it in terms of some of the holidays that the kids go through, where, you know, for Valentine's Day, it's always looking forward to making Valentine's cards. You know, even if you go to Target, you pick up the the 30-pack, 40-pack of Valentine's cards. It's, you know, the young kids in elementary school writing out the names of their classmates on the Valentine's cards. And they do that for a number of years. And it's always something as February rolls around, it's Valentine's Day. And, you know, they've got a little bit of time in the classroom to share Valentine's with each other. Or it could be something that's more of a religious holiday, too, that and, you know, that adds the sense of time that the kids start to develop when they're young. They know that when fall comes around, that there's certain activities that are going on, certain traditions that that happen at that point. And it's something that young kids start to look forward to, and it starts to help them with their own identities, the identity of being a member of the family, an identity of being a member of the community, of a congregation even. So traditions play an important role in that. Now, the other part too is that it really helps to pass on the family values and the cultural and religious heritages. And this is probably where some of the criticisms and critiques of tradition uh, come in. I mean, certainly when you start to think of uh, the hot button holiday of uh, Columbus Day, right? However you look at Columbus Day, it's certainly something that can be a bit divisive. It is something that needs some reflection. But some of the things that we do from tradition standpoint help to pass on those family values What I mean by that is that if you take a moment and you're going through uh, Thanksgiving and you're really stressing that the having a celebration with friends uh, and being thankful for those friendships, that becomes something that as little grandkids, they continue to grow up and they start to take that message on and that becomes a part of them. Same thing with a number of the religious traditions that we have in our families. You know, we have these traditions of maybe paying a tithing or giving a fast offering. You know, when the plate comes around, you know, that we start to be able to show the kids to put the envelope or or put the funds into the collection plate. However that might be, it starts to install with them the value of being generous and being giving. And that's something that's not a bad thing at all. But again, it's it's one of these things where, you know, we've we want to be sure that we're exploring what these traditions are and that we take some thoughtful care with those traditions and then making sure that we're passing on something that's still relevant to the age that the kids are growing up in. The other part, too, that I think is a real benefit and something I touched on before is that gives the kids a sense of a family bonding experience, family history, right, to share. And how many of us can think back, uh, Thanksgiving always pops into mind, but it could be, you know, grandma's recipe for uh, chili or grandma's roast beef recipe or, and I say grandma a lot because it seems like we passed down those recipes quite a bit, but I'm in the South. So there could be a lot of grandpa's recipe for smoking a Boston butt, you know, whatever that is, that recipe gets passed down. And this is something that you can even look back at and say, Hey, in the 1930s, 1940s, this is how your grandfather, uh, cooked up this barbecue or, This is how grandma or my mom made her apple pie. And here's the recipe for it. And it's something where I think it's important with the tradition is to be pointing these things out, pointing out those family connections. It's important that 
the traditions are used to strengthen that family unit and to strengthen the idea of continuity between generations that may not have ever met and may not meet. But it's kind of a neat thing for young girls and boys to sit there and do something and be connected with something that their great-grandfather did or their great-grandmother did. And that a way of doing something is passed down from great-grandma to grandma to mom to dad to the grandchildren. So a lot of benefits to having traditions and building traditions. Now, again, we're kind of think of traditions as holiday type activities, but they don't have to be. We should pick out some traditions that are uh, just even ordinary type activities, but they're extraordinary in terms of the family unit, right? And a couple of those things could be, uh, you know, hey, we always rent a vacation home up in Wilmington for a week, you know, at the end of summer, kind of after the season is over, uh, we rent a big vacation home and all the uh, sons and daughters and their families, everybody comes together and we spend a week or a long weekend at the end of every summer up in Wilmington, North Carolina. Or, you know, I love my daughter-in-law uh, and she has brought in this spirit that is so fun of these seasonal activities. And that could be, you know, one of the fun ones we had when we're up in Virginia is fall activities, right? And and for her, fall activities are apple picking, uh, corn mazes, and picking up pumpkins, uh, getting pitchers, you know, next to the hay bales or, or whatever the farm is around there. And those are fun fall activities that are traditions for her family, but then they're also shared with my family. You know, we've started getting into all these things that, that she's brought to us and, and we are very much uh, the richer for it. Now, the one thing I do want to uh, kind of pivot over into is talking about rituals, right? And so, as I said, traditions are, if we think of traditions as that's the, the umbrella term of uh, the family always gets together for Thanksgiving. That's a tra- tradition, But the ritual is we always have, um, you know, a fried turkey. We always have um, apple pie. We always have sweet potatoes. We always have, you know, the menu is set. And then how you create the food itself becomes a ritual. So high level, it's the activity. And then the rituals are the details. Now, what are some of the rituals that we have that we can use with children and grandchildren to help them develop and grow stronger sense of ties to the tradition? Now, some of the rituals that we have actually will teach responsibility. And some of that can be tied into those activities that we talked about, whether it's Christmas, whether it's a religious a tradition, whatever that might be, but let's give the kids involved at the appropriate age and in the appropriate way to use those rituals to teach them responsibility. You know, uh, little kids might be given the responsibility of being able to get all the Christmas ornaments uh, categorized in different ways. You know, you might want to have all those glass bulbs in kind of a one pile in one setting so they're easy to put up onto the tree. You might want to have all the tinsel in one other area. You might want to have, um, you know, some of the lights put in a different area. And you can have little kids help you out with these things because they can do that kind of sorting based on their abilities. Now, some of the other things that could teach responsibility as the kids are getting older is having the responsibility of waking everybody up. Let's say you're at doing a late summer activity or late summer family reunion 
in Wilmington again. Let's stick with that. I like that. Now, one of the things you can do is on one day you've decided as a family that you are all going to go do a certain activity. Well, maybe what you do is you make it a responsibility of one of the kids to help wake everybody up and start the breakfast, right? And that's something they can easily do. You help them out by making sure that there's a little alarm clock set and you've got backups, but that you start to get, you start to let them know that it's their responsibility to help out to make this tradition successful. The other part too with having rituals is you want to use them to boost positivity. You want to have these rituals where kids especially can get involved and that the, let's say, success of the tradition or the success of the outcome of the activity is kind of hinging on their ability to come through with, you know, whatever the task is that you assign to them. Right. And we see this a lot where we have kids helping us out with baking cookies. And I love baking cookies and I love having kids help me out when when I'm doing that. It doesn't happen very often, but I used to have my nieces and nephews help me out quite a bit. One, they would have to, you know, help with the measuring of the ingredients. They would have to help with the stirring of the ingredients to create the, the cookie batter. And then I would also have them, you know, put the cookie sheets in, set the timer on the stove, and then help me take everything out. So they were responsible for that. And that was part of the ritual of baking cookies was being able to show them exactly what activities had to happen. So we had success with with baking those cookies. So that's just an example of the positivity that we want to come out of the rituals that are involved in the traditions that we have. We should also use those uh, rituals as building strong family connections. Now, I can't tell you how many times I've interviewed adult grandchildren on the podcast, and they are always talking about the ritual of going fishing or going on a hike or playing checkers, or whatever that activity is that becomes a bit of a ritual with their grandfather. And that ritual helps build that connection. And it's a memory that they have with, this is the connection I have with my grandfather. This was our activity. This is how that activity made me feel feel special and feel loved. And that's the exact type of connection that we want for our grandkids. Find those little parts of the ritual that can help build that connection with you and with the family. And some of that could be where you need to make sure you put forth an effort to call out the kids for doing a part of the rituals that led to the success of the tradition. And then to use those rituals to further develop that sense of belonging. And we talked about the sense of belonging as part of the tradition, but sometimes the rituals themselves, when we get down to the individual activity that's part of the tradition, really develops that sense of, uh, of belonging to the family and being part of that continuum of the family, right? So if there's a a piece of a, a ritual that's part of a tradition that great grandpa used to do, then, you know, when great grandpa can't fulfill that ritual and can't do that ritual, you know, have the granddaughter step in and take that over and, or have the grandson come in and take that, that piece over. And then there's a little bit of a passing of the baton. And it's important, I think, with rituals, as we pass these batons, let's say, that it becomes acknowledged that, hey, this is now this person's role, right? So, and it may be something just as simple as, hey, I'm retiring. I'm not playing in the Turkey Bowl anymore this year, but my son can take over and go represent the family. 
And so he's taken over. He's going to go to the Turkey Bowl. Uh, and Turkey Bowl is uh, typically a two-hand touch kind of neighborhood football game um, that's played prior to everybody uh, diving in for Thanksgiving dinner. You know, it's just a great way to to kill some time before the big dinner in the afternoon or evening. And it's a great way to just kind of connect with some of the neighborhood kids and some of the neighborhood uh, families. But as we start to, you know, get older, I got aches and pains. I'm not sure I would even go participate in those things anymore, but I'd love to send my kids out or my grandkids when they're a little bit older to go do that. So make sure that with these traditions, make sure with these rituals, as the grandkids are stepping into those roles and starting to take on and lead in those traditions, that there is a bit of an acknowledgement and a passing of the torch. You know, I, I love the fact that in so many service organizations, there's a bit of a handoff. You know, if we think about the change of commands at military bases, there's a parade, there's a dignitaries that come in, there's a uh, giving of, you know, thanks and recognition for what the former commander has done. And then there's a welcoming in of the new commander. And so I love the idea that as grandkids start to take over, as we start to push them forward into these family traditions and that they take over some of these rituals, that there is an acknowledgement that happens. You know, and, it, and sometimes that can be, uh, you know, passing on grandpa's uh, barbecue apron, you know, is, is now the property and, and something that the 10 year old grandson gets to use. Or maybe it's the old um, Betty Crocker cookbook, you know, the, the kind that your, your mom and your grandma had that has all sorts of like biscuit stains and gravy stains and all sorts of things on it that's all beat up. And, you know, maybe that now goes to uh, the granddaughter and that she has that recipe book and she's taking over some of the cooking. And, th and that cooking and everything, like we said, could be grandsons too. Um, but just generally, those things tend to come down uh, with, with the women sometimes. So as we continue on into the different holiday seasons that are coming up, I want you guys to be thinking about what are the family traditions that you have? And then around those traditions, what are some of the rituals that you have? And then take it a step further. You know, when we have a, a day or two off and we have some time to reflect, think about what the non-holiday um, traditions and rituals that you have with your family. And then how do you make an effort to include your grandkids into those? Or what's your future plans? Let's say you have new grandkids. Um, you know, it's 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 hard to make a six month old uh, part of a big family uh, reunion tradition when they're six months old. But what are some things that you're starting to look forward to with these grandkids if if they're really young? Or what are some things that you can do the next time around the family reunion comes about? where you can turn some of these activities and some of these rituals either over to the grandkids or you can really make them feel much more included in some of the decision-making and in some of the active rituals that go on with those traditions. So what I want you guys to do is please shoot me an email at greg at cool-grandpa.com let me know what some of the traditions that you have in your family and what are some things that even your son-in-laws and daughter-in-laws are bringing to the family that maybe weren't initially a part of what you were doing, but that those new additions to your family are bringing in in terms of traditions and rituals. The other thing I want you guys to do is look for those unique opportunities to really call out the grandkids taking over some of these roles within the family and making sure that they feel just as connected as and important as they should be and making sure that you're expressing that to them and expressing that in front of their moms and dads, brothers and sisters and cousins, aunts and uncles, all that. 
Because man, nothing makes a kid feel super connected and super proud as when their grandfather, grandmother maybe calls them out in front of the family for something extremely positive. So until next time, remember to stay cool. Thank you for listening to the Cool Grandpa Podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode, please do me a favor and share it with a friend. That's the best way you can help us to expand our community, as well as get the news out about how valuable grandpas are in the lives of those kids. If you'd like to leave me a comment or shoot me a potential topic for this uh, podcast, please go to www cool-grandpa.us look for the comments tab fill it up hit submit it's as easy as that until next time remember to stay cool